Greetings, fellow cyberdogs and fellow Minecrafters and fellow mine squatches all over the world. This is the Lockaba with the Lockaba presents. Let's play the Squatchcraft TFC2 mod pack. TFC stands for Terra Firma Craft. And if any of you have played Terra Firma Craft, you know it's some tough survival. We are here in the Squatch Lodge, and we have been dealing with days upon days of rain that's why there's been a bit of a delay here we'll actually see if we look today is the 17th of june and the last time that we were together was like i don't know like the 8th of june or something but the rain finally stopped just before sunup today and we can finally finally get on with our lives so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be uh setting up uh a coal pile and the way we're going to do this is we need to get ourselves some dirt, number one. And then number two, we need to set a bunch of log piles. We're going to leave the top of one of those log piles exposed. Besides, I'd want to get rid of this for the sake of landscaping anyway, so that makes me happy. But what we're going to be doing is putting a bunch of log piles together. We're going to cover them over with dirt, except for the very top one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set that on fire and cover it with a piece of dirt and it's going to sit and smolder under the ground and eventually become charcoal now the reason that we want that charcoal is because we want to be able to set up a forge and so I figured what I'd do is I would set this up so that uh, we could get it rocking and a rolling and then what we would do is move on to some other things but I figured I'd just dig it out right here and just start placing log piles. We want far enough away from the house that it's not going to burn the house down. But let's get started here. Let's fill this guy up. There we go. Good deal. And then we'll put one next to it. We're going to be working fast here because we've got a lot to get done. There we go. And then we're just going to keep right on going like this. What do we got left here? We've got quite a bit. Because I want to make a really, really large amount of charcoal so we don't have to deal with it again. If we get lucky, we'll end up coming across a coal deposit. But since we can't count on that... I figure with these wonderful sequoias that provide us so much wood, we might as well make it happen. Let's see, what have we got here? One, two, three, four more of them, huh? All right. We'll do it just like this. And that one. And then the last one we're going to put right in the top center. There we go. Now we're going to take that dirt that we just dug up. And we're going to surround it. Just like so. get it but we'll cover it over with one layer of dirt like this we can't click the log piles we've actually got to click the, uh, the dirt itself so we'll have to do just like that see so now that we know that it will cover it we're just going to dig that off of there again all right we're ready to go and don't know if we'll be able to get it started with our fire starter or not. We're sure going to try. Nope, we're going to need a torch. All right, let's uh, get our sticks down here in our hot bar. Just come on right over here and just, just like that. We should have a torch on us at all times anyway. We're going to come on up and we're going to toss that torch on there. Just like so. And it should ignite it. There we go. And then we're going to drop that block right there and see how we've got all the smoke coming up. 
it is now a smoldering coal pile oh look at that we've got more cherries that makes me very happy to have all these cherries but so now that we've got that coal pile going I can fill this in finally there we go um just get rid of this dirt like this there we go fill in this hole as much as we can as we can Except that's not dirt that's our that's our gravel and we're gonna need that now that we have that going on um, we're gonna let that do its thing and it will burn for a long time so we're gonna let that do its thing um, we've got a few more trees we need to take down like this guy over here we got to finish taking down but it's time for us to start considering going and doing some serious exploration to try to find the other materials that we require. So we're going to just eat quick. But we need to find grain, no doubt about that. I'm just going to come over and knock this fella down. Hello, Mr. Tree. I've come to chop you. But we're going to get this nice and clear because we're going to need space for some some level of pen or barn for when we bring home animals and we're going to you know of course want to make sure that we don't have mobs all on top of us all the time so that's another reason to do this but we're going to want to collect a lot of clay we've already got several stacks of clay but we're going to need a lot more than that and so um oh wow we actually had more more wood left. Oh no, we just picked that up. Never mind. He he he. Yeah, I'm so brilliant. I was going. We're gonna have more wood. Why didn't I put it in the pile? Well, it's because we just collected it. But um, as you can see, the grass grows back, which is nice. Keep our thatch supply going. But we really need to go out and search and find number one some sort of flux stone. So either borax, limestone dolomite or marble we really need to find some sort of grain because we'll, we'll need grain first of all to get the animals to follow us home you know unless we're able to make rope and so far I haven't um, found any means to make rope we'd have to find jute which is another reason to go out searching um, we need to to find basically any grain but rice can be used to breed the animals but um, rice can be used to feed them and acclimate them because the thing about the animals here in terra firma craft is when you find an animal what you do is you bring it home and then each day you feed it and what it'll do is slowly but surely make that animal familiar and as the animal gets more and more familiar it'll finally reach a point where you can breed the animal now wild animals oh come on now behave yourself wild animals never become fully familiarized and as a result it's when they have babies that the babies can become fully familiarized because of course they've been raised from the time they were little babies and so we've got these piggies over here and and we definitely are interested in bringing some of them home pigs are a, a great animal to start with um, primarily because their gestation period for babies is much shorter than the other animals number one and number two they produce eight offspring sometimes as many as eight are we doing we're still cooking over here that's good and so given the fact that they produce such a large number of offspring it'll, it means you can you can get yourself a lot of animals really fast but we're gonna just take the time to knock down what trees we can here with the axe that we've got left there we go grab Grab that guy. Now we're looking pretty solid here out front. We're going to get this guy too. But basically, I'd like to have it completely clear all the way down to the beach. There we go. Oh, an apple tree? I didn't know we had an apple tree here. Look at that. We've had an apple tree this close all this time, and I didn't know it. Well, that's awesome. It's uh, it won't produce apples until the autumn, so let's see if we can get a uh, sapling from it. Nope, no sapling there. Nope. 
Oh, there we go. I think we just got a sapling. All right, so I think we only got one, but we got one. By golly, let's let's bring that up and plant it while we still got some daylight. I'm so pleased we've now got peaches and and cherry trees. And I've been saving a spot right over here in case we happen to have found an apple tree. And there it was, right next to us, and we didn't even know it. All right. Well, we've got one sequoia over here we've still got to take down. And we're going to leave that apple. I mean, why would why on earth would we cut down an apple tree when it's free food? Free food. And I think we might have just enough axe left to get this white cedar over here. Let's see. But it is so nice having our home finally. Pop. Oh yeah, it was, it was just enough to get that guy. Good deal. So now we don't have to worry anywhere near as much about the mobs. We're going to have to dig a lot of dirt and get this fella filled in. Because I just don't like that down there. Nope, I'm going to walk off that eventually and break my neck. Let's head on inside here. Because the sun is going down. I did some experimenting with the white cedar using the, the lumber. You know, I showed you in the last video how we can place lumber. And I uh, made myself kind of a... Just just a little a little thing here so that I don't end up walking off of it in my sleep or something. And uh, that's another thing we need is we need a large rawhide. Because if with large rawhide and two thatch blocks, we can make a bed that... While we can't sleep in it and pass the nights, we can lay down in it and it'll set our spawn to our to that bed as opposed to respawning at our original spawn point. But one of the things I really wanted to do here was come to the big map and go to our waypoints and get rid of this waypoint for a moment. There we go. So that we can zoom in and we can see how our house looks from above. I'm liking it. I am, I am. So we got one sequoia to knock out there. And if we really wanted to be safe, we should probably knock out these two sequoias here, but eh, it's not all that important. But I'm so happy that we have got that apple tree out there. I never even realized it was there. Let's see here. We haven't explored, whoops, we haven't explored very far at all. We've gotten over to some of these ravines and the one cliff over here where that cherry tree was. But other than that, we really haven't gone very far at all. And that's, of course, because, you know, we've been primarily focused on getting our survival ready to rock and roll. But it's definitely time, so I think it may be time for us to do some preparations for a trip. The first thing we're going to do, though, is we're just going to get these log piles taken care of here since we've got this extra wood. Just get it out of our inventory here. There we go. And I guess we'll... Stack this one over here. And then, wow, we, yeah, we have got a lot of timber. Holy crap. Timber and lumber. When it's not cut, it's timber. When it is cut, it's lumber. I don't know if people know that or not, but I guess we'll put some of it over here. So I'm going to get this lumber put down for now. That's not what I wanted. Darn it. Clear those out of there. Right click this. Click that. There we go. But I'm going to get this lumber put down and I'm waiting for morning. And when morning comes, we're going to make a plan. In fact, we may make more than a plan. We may make a boat and go do some traveling. It depends on whether our. Uh, our coal pile is done smoldering or not, we may we may end up digging that up. But in any event, I'll be back either when the morning comes or all hell breaks loose. All right, my friends. So we need to do a little eating here. The sun is just coming up. I'm gonna eat these cherries. We've eaten the last of our venison and our pork. And so... Thankfully, we've still got our cherry trees over here, and we're going to come on over and pick a few more cherries. Because we're going to need food on the road. And odds are is we'll find th good things like bell peppers and stuff like that to eat along the road. But 
eh, I just would rather be sure that we've, we've got something to munch on. And cherries are good. I love me some cherries. Um, we should not have to worry about water. We are going to just go down to our water source here and fill our jug. Do this carefully so we don't fall anywhere. There we go. And now I think it really is time. Ooh, woodland pink root, huh? That's pretty. We've got so many beautiful plants around here. Once we're done getting a few things done, we are going to take and do some planting. But it looks like we are done over here. So let's dig and see. Yep, we have got charcoal. All right. So we're going to dig this up. And then cover it completely. And I think we're probably going to just drop these dirt blocks right down into that big old hole. Work towards covering it up, or maybe we'll use them to do a little landscaping to square things off. I don't know. But as you can see, what we have here now is a big old gigantic pile of charcoal. And we have to harvest this charcoal with our shovel. Just to show you here, we just up and wail on it and it'll start to break off pieces of charcoal see so we're just gonna start busting that out there we go make sure we're picking these up but magnificent there whoops there went our shovel Let's make another one. Come here, rocks. Thank you. One thing about it, the shovel is the quickest and easiest pattern out of all our Neolithic tools. Let's just make another shovel to make sure that we can get the rest of this. Because we want to get this and we want to get it tucked away. And then I think what we're going to do is we are going to build a boat and we're going to go to sea and see what we see. But in order to establish a forge, we have to have a space that, surround, that has stone of some sort under it and on four sides with an open top. If we had coal, what we'd do is we'd take nine pieces of coal and combine it together into a coal block and we would place it down into that, that space. But since we have charcoal, we'll just put actual nine pieces of charcoal in there to fill it up. And then we ignite it, and that becomes a forge. And more thatch. Boy, it grows fast. Seems like I just mowed the damn lawn. All right, let's take this coal in here. We'll just put it right in the chest. There we go. All right, so I've got some gravel with me. I've got our, our panning pans. I've got 16 white cedar plank blocks. We're going to use some of those blocks. Oh, and I've been just planting little plants in here for the fun of it. Just to give it some something interesting to look at. And here we've got Australian bugles. There, those were the ones growing over here. But anyway, what we're going to do is take and just make a good old-fashioned traditional Minecraft boat. And as a matter of fact, we're going to make two of them so that if we have one break, we've got another one on standby immediately. We are going to, just before we go, we're going to take and uh, take this dirt and just dump it down this big old hole over here. And maybe eventually what we'll do is we will go down and explore down there because there was something I did see. It's now covered up, unfortunately, but there was a piece of tetrahedrite down there, which means there could be a tetrahedrite deposit right below our home. And that would really be something. But of course, without the equipment to mine it, it's pretty pointless. So what we're going to do is we're going to come on down and toss the old boat in. And we're just going to work this coastline a little bit and see what we see. Got to be careful here with these giant kelp forests. Make sure we don't break our boat. But we're just going to ease our way along. We're, gonna, we're looking for unique minerals. We're looking for 
marble, we're looking for chalk, we're looking for dolomite, we are looking for grain. Those are sea oats and they're not actually a grain. I thought about putting a recipe in, but sea oats are so so tiny, yet really they're, they're not worth attempting to eat. Thankfully, if we get hungry, there's seaweed all along here. That seaweed growing right there on the shore is food on those neat plants up there. We're just going to see what we've got here. If, In theory, we shouldn't have to go too terribly far before we get a change of things. So we know that our, uh, I believe it's Gabbro or Nice, that our, our original stone is. And over here it changes to Schist. We're just going to mosey along. I'd really like to spot some deer and kill some deer. Not only would that be food, it would be hides and it would be more sinew. Because remember, we want to kill some deer and get some sinew. Oop, and there we broke our boat that quick. Now one of the interesting things is even though I made that boat out of white cedar planks, when it broke, what we got back was oak planks. And that's an easy way, if not a cheaty way. Oh, come back here, boat. Hey, boat. Um, it's an easy way, if not a cheaty way, to get some oak planks. And that can be handy if you've got uh, a mod that uses, you know, that has recipes that use oak planks. Because we can take those and we can put them in with the saw and turn them into oak lumber. There we go. But yeah, I ended up hitting the shoreline there. But we're just going to mosey along and see what we see. We're looking for minerals that are in the cliff faces. We're looking for grain. We're looking for deer looking for pumpkins especially because while torches burn out pumpkins are a long-term light source when you put a, a torch in them they become jack-o-lanterns and they're long-term but that's why I made sure and carry like like 16 planks so that if we broke boats we'd be able to make new boats that is really a neat there's a cherry tree up there that we saw that's really neat up there that great big open area like that could potentially have minerals inside there but I don't know that I want to go up there not right now anyway but so we're still seeing lots of sequoia and white cedar and lots and lots of sea oats there's this would all be kind of barren if it wasn't for the plant mega pack but I'll tell you what we're at 22 minutes now and I think pretty soon what I'm going to do is end this episode and we'll continue our boat journey in the next episode. Oh, there's some carrots up over there. That's good. We'll have to collect some of those later. But we're just going to keep on moseying on here for a little while. And so I will see you in the next one.